Hey folks, Jim Thomas here, Fitness Management and Consulting, and welcome to our channel today. I appreciate y'all being here. And if you're new to the channel, uh, if you're finding us for that very first time, you're know, welcome as well. You know, it's good to have you. And as always, a quick reminder to all, you know, my main focus, uh, you know, my direction here you know, with the channel is I want to be able to provide as much information as I possibly can to as many people as I possibly can across all regions. And the best way I can do that is when you choose to subscribe to the channel, when you choose to hit the like button, and when you choose to share the information you know, with friends, associates, and colleagues. So for those of you that have not yet done so, you know, please hit that subscribe button, please hit that like button, please share the information. And then additional ways you know, to support the channel, uh, you can check out the links below. Uh, we appreciate your, your taking a look at that as well. And with that said, let's get into our topic here today. And it's 10 ways that you need to change how you think and how you talk to succeed at gym sales. 10 ways that you need to change how you think and how you talk to succeed at gym sales, okay? You know, one of the things that's true about this, so much of this is mindset and how we think, because truly how we talk is gonna be how, we, how we're thinking, okay? So let's jump into this, and so number one, is embrace plenty, embrace plenty, don't embrace scarcity, okay? And here's what I mean, there's plenty of people out there. If you miss this one, there's gonna be another one, okay? Embrace that there's plenty of people to talk to. I mean, think about this for a second. You know, think about the area where your facility is, and I'll just take some general numbers here, but say your facility is right here, and it's pretty much a three-mile radius. It's about where most are going to pull from, about a 15-minute drive time. You could be more, it could be less, but let's just call it a 15-minute drive time. How many people live in that 15-minute drive time? How many people live in that three-mile radius? Smaller areas, maybe 10,000. Bigger areas, maybe 100,000. Think about that. 10,000 to 100,000 people. There's plenty of people. There's no shortage of opportunity, and that's going to continue to, to churn and roll over. So just embrace that there's more than enough out there, okay? If you didn't get this one, it's not like, oh my gosh, I didn't get this one. There's plenty more where that came from, okay? So mindset. We're not prejudging. We're not skipping steps. It's just a mindset. We're embracing plenty. Number two, put activity above all else. Put activity above all else. And so, you know, the key to success ultimately, you know, taking action, taking action on this. How many leads are we collecting every day? You know, how many calls are we making every day? How many contacts are we making? How many appointments are we making? You know, activity, you know, how much training are we doing? Because if we're doing all these activities, ultimately you're gonna have success. You know, even if you're struggling a bit, if you're bringing in enough leads, you'll outrun it a little bit, okay? But put activity above all else. Don't just focus on the sale. Focus on all the things that go before that because the sale, it really is the end result of everything that you do well. It's like that paycheck that you get. You know, that paycheck is an end result of all these other things that you've done. So stay focused on the action, stay focused on the activities that you need to do to get there. Number three, be direct and get down to business. You know, be direct and get down to business. People don't have time to talk about the weather and all these things are going on. And what I mean by getting down to business, it's not making a sale, so to speak. That's gonna be the end result. When I say get down to business, start finding out what the customer's goals are. Start finding out, you know, why those goals are important and start solving problems. Show the customer how you can solve problems. Show the customer how you can provide solutions. Be direct, get down to business. If you're trying to, to get a, um, a joint venture with a local business, you know, how can you solve their problem? I mean, certainly we know how we can solve yours here, but how do we solve theirs? How are we gonna help drive traffic into their business? Okay, get down to business here. Solve problems for folks, okay? Change everything for you on that initial phone call. Okay, now number four, you want to build many relationships. Get to know folks. 
Okay, I'm not talking we're necessarily becoming lifelong friends, but get to know people. You know, create this sense of community. Take notes on this when you're talking to folks. Take notes. Make sure it goes to your CRM. If you're not using a CRM, get one. Okay, there's a lot of them out there, and there's, you can search Google and find some free ones if you need one. Okay, you know the problem with just writing this stuff down on an Excel spreadsheet, we start to kind of pick through it, and I'll call this one. I won't call this one. Maybe I'll call this one. But you want to build relationships. You want to get to know your customer. Okay, you know, what are their goals? Why is it important? How long they've been thinking about this? Who else is involved in the decision? You know, all the things that are part of it. Make sure it goes into that CRM. Could just think for a moment. Let's just say you have a CRM. Say you've got you've been around for a while, a few years, and you went back in your CRM. What if you had all this data on all of your uh, non-members or even members that have been in the last year, last two years? How much easier would it make that phone call if we had that? Okay, but build these relationships, get to know your customer. You're trying to get this sense of community. Okay, number five on 10 ways you need to change how you think and talk in order to succeed at gym sales. Number five, assume that the sale is inevitable, assume that you're eventually going to get this sale. Eventually, you're going to get this sale. You know, you folks watching right now, eventually you'll probably call, okay? Eventually, you'll click on a link, okay? But assume the sale is inevitable and proceed that way. We're not assuming to the point that we're skipping steps, but what we're doing is our, our attitude is right and we're following the process. We're solving problems for folks. You do that, eventually, you're probably going to sign this person up because you know, you've know you got the best facility to get the results, you're the best person to do it, and now's the best time. Assume the sale's ine inevitable. Eventually, I'll, I'll get you, okay, so to speak. Maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, but eventually you'll get started with us because we're the best option to help you look better, feel better, and live longer. Uh, number six, be unfazed by rejection. Be unfazed by rejection. So what? Okay. And so here's how I look at it. Okay. Let's just say that you want to make 50 sales in a month, whether it's as your as a group or as an individual, whatever it is. I want to make 50 sales in a month. And you're probably a little better than this, but let's just say you're a 50% closer. That means you're going to have to talk to 100 people. So the secret is, it's not the 50 sales, the secret is talking to the 100 people, right? Well, going into it, from my perspective, I already know you're, you're going to miss, you're not, you're not going to sell 50 of them. I already know it. It's built into the process because nobody gets 100%. It's built into it. So I don't worry about it. As long as our attitude's right, and as long as we're following the process and taking those levels of action and things we've talked about, as long as you're doing those things, I don't worry too much about it. Okay? Because I'm unfazed by the rejection. It's part of the process. So if you want 50 sales, easiest way to get it, if you're not getting that, talk to 100 people. You get 50 of them will tell you no. They'll reject you at some level. The other 50 will say, man, this is great. And they'll probably bring in a friend. Okay? Uh, number seven. Record everything. I'm not necessarily talking voice record, but you know, <clears throat> record everything. You know, we talked earlier. How many leads are you generating every day? You know, you could almost bet that in many cases, you know, the problem that many salespeople have is they have an empty pipeline. They've signed up all the folks that are interested. Now their pipeline's dry. How many new leads are we bringing in every day? What's our plan of action look like? How many outbound calls are we making a day? How many appointments are we making a day? How many, appointment, uh, how many shows do we have? How many sales do we have? How about the second sale? Know your data. Know your key performance indicators. Record everything. Know exactly what's happening. You know, the math will never, never lie. And I'll talk more about that here as we kind of conclude this. Uh, number eight, be a fearless expert. Be a fearless expert. And what are you an expert on? How to solve the customer's problem and how to provide solutions. That's what it is. Okay, become an expert on solving their problem. I mean, how many folks have have joined a gym and couldn't stick with it? 
Show them how to stick with it. Show them how you're going to help them stick with it. How many have joined and not gotten results? How many have joined and gotten results and they didn't keep them? Show them how to do it. Okay, be an expert. Solve problems. Provide solutions. Be fearless. Number nine, get comfy with your glass house. Get comfy with your glass house. Here's what I mean. You know what? You're, you're going to push. When I say push, you're going to expand. You're going to advance into the marketplace. And you're gonna, you'll get some pushback. You'll get some critics. You'll get some folks that are naysayers. Okay? Get comfortable with it. Here, here's the thing I want you to know, just as an absolute. Unless you're getting some kind of criticism, some kind of negativity, some kind of pushback, if you're not getting some of that, you're probably not pushing hard enough into the marketplace, whether as a business or as an individual, because the issues are kind of the same, is that nobody knows who you are and those that do don't have you at top of mind. So you've got to do everything in your power to get known, get known, get known, get known. And you'll get some negativity along the way. Get comfortable with it. Know that it's part of the process. It's just part of it. If, if everything's super uh, simple, no one's saying a word, you're probably not pushing hard enough into the marketplace. Not for the sale, but into the you know getting recognition kind of thing. And then number 10, sales is all about math. Sales is all about math. So I don't want to discount you know attitude and process and mindset and all these things. But when you're doing all these things, it's about the math. How many sales do you want? I want to make 100 sales this month. Okay, great. Write a plan of action on how you're going to do that. Write a plan of action. You can search the channel here on how to write one. Write that plan of action and just know, worst case scenario, if I want 100 sales a month, I have to talk to 200 people. That's it. And so if we're working, what, uh, you know, five, uh, 20 days out of the month, Say you're off on weekends, you're working 20 days on the month. I need to talk to 10 people a day. I do that, I hit my number. No matter who you are, that's probably going to be correct. Now, if you have higher closing percentages, you're better at this, you'll do even better, or you need to talk to fewer people. But make it about the math. This really can be simple, okay, if we allow it to be. So much of this is mindset. But 10 ways that you need to change how you think and how you talk to succeed at gym sales. Take a look at these. There's a lot of folks out there that the mindset really is the biggest part of kind of where those struggles are. Okay, so take a look. See if you can start improving your business right now. So folks, again, my name is Jim Thomas. My company is Fitness Management and Consulting. Appreciate you being here today. And again, as a reminder, you know, my focus, you know, my mission here in the channel is I want to be able to provide as much information as I possibly can to as many folks as I possibly can across all regions. And the best way I can do that is when you choose to subscribe to the channel, when you choose to like the videos, and when you choose to share the information. So if you've not yet done so, you know, please hit that subscribe button. Please hit that like button. I appreciate it. And please check out the links below for additional ways you can support the channel and additional ways that we can help uh, take your business you know, to a whole new level. So folks, we look forward to seeing y'all in that next video.